Hey guys, Mike here at MH Tutorials. Welcome back. Well guys, if you are into 3D modeling and texturing, whether that is in Maya or Blender or 3ds Max or whatever package you're using, you're going to love this, right? I just got my new uh, software in, uh, Filter Forge 4.0, and I absolutely love it. So I want to share it with you guys what you can do with Filter Forge, all right? Now, uh, when 3D modeling, you are dealing with texture files, right? And you are always looking for files that meet your need. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are sites out there, but they're always, you know, kind of not exactly what you're looking for and so forth. Now, uh, Filter Forge is a, uh, a Photoshop plugin, but it also can work as a standalone, as you can see in front of you. And we're just going to go through that. All right. So we got, um, this is our main interface here. We got um, a texture uh, directory here and we've got a fix directory. Okay, so let's just uh, start off by creating a simple new file, okay? So in this case, we're not gonna work on an existing image that we wanna tweak. We're just gonna make a new one, okay? So file, new image. Let's do 20, 1024 by 1024 and hit okay, all right? All right. So let's say I want to have a stone texture file. Okay. Now these are a number of presets. So I'll just, uh, for example, double click on this one here. Okay. And you probably think, well, yeah, okay. So what big deal? It's a texture file. Okay. But what is really, really cool about it, if you go to settings, what you can do is you can tweak it real time. Okay, so if I click on color number two and I want that to be more orange, it's updated real time. Okay, color number one, uh, uh, hit OK first. Color number one, let's do maybe towards white or I don't know, red for that matter. You can tweak that any way you like. Okay, cool. Let's say I want a metallic look, totally different approach. Okay. Cool. Now, when I got that, I can go to my lighting and here you have a kind of an HDRI setup. Okay. So what kind of external lighting do you want to have on your texture file? So if I click on church, you see that my light pattern is totally different. I can go to lobby. I can take spring and so forth. Right. Cool. Okay. So that's stone. Now let's say I want to have a techno. Now keep in mind, we're not adjusting an existing image, we're creating new ones. And just to give you an idea, this looks like a fairly small image, but if I go to filter and I go to, let's see, was that under filter? No, sorry, under view, preview size, actual size, you can see that it's very, very crisp and clear. Okay, so I got that. Now let's uh, tweak that a little bit. Again, you can go into settings, you can change the background to a totally different color and so forth. All right. We'll just cancel that. You got uh, all sorts of stuff you can choose from. Let's do one more. There we go. Now this uh, looks like uh, the surface of a planet from a top view, for example. And, um, you know, you got a number of presets here that you can use. Let's take that one. So all cool stuff. All right. Now let's get to the, uh, the stuff that's kind of interesting, especially when texturing, we're going to go to our building option. And what you see is a set of tiles. All right. Yeah, I'll just uh, zoom back in. Sorry. Like that. Okay. So we got our tiles. All right, now what? Now we can start by selecting one of these presets. Let's do the second one. So I'll just uh, double click on that. Now let's say you're texturing a scene in Maya and you want to have a different color tile and they should be aligned in a little bit of a different way. And you're not entirely pleased with the size. Okay, so you're spending a lot of time on Google trying to find the right files. Now here you can simply go to settings and say, okay, I want to change the color of my tiles. So I'm going to take the green color and I'm going to move towards something that is more yellowish. Okay. We'll just go up here, do something like that and hit. Okay. Now for my next color, 
let's do something else. Let's do blue. We'll do, let's say, we'll do something fairly dark, okay? And of course, it's gonna be a blend, right? Now, for my mortar, I want that to be black, for example. Or go right up and make it white. Cool. Now, uh, next thing is what we can do is we can um, select seamless tiling. Now, if you are into 3D modeling and texturing, you know that seamless tiling is really, really important, right? So let's give that a go. And what it does is it sets up a seamless tile for you, which is kind of nice, right? Okay, what's next? Uh, again, lighting. You can choose what kind of lighting you're working with. And that way you can tweak all sorts of stuff. Stone, for example. We'll just take this guy. Oops, cancel. Here you got kind of a hyper shade type of structure here that you can deal with. And I'll go into that in another video. But let's get into uh, the effects section because that is really neat as well. All right. And I'm going to go to photos. And the reason why I'm going to do that is I'm going to go up to file, open image. And in this case, I'm just going to open an existing file of my train here. Okay, so that's my train. Now, there are all sorts of effects that you can release on this image. Okay, um, I recently did a scene where I had a, um, a, a kind of cork board on a wall with some uh, pictures pinned to it and so forth. And I was looking for a really old vintage picture but I really couldn't find something that would work for me, all right? Now, in this case, you simply click on old picture and look what happens. Very neat. Now, this in itself isn't unique because, you know, there are a lot of Photoshop type filters that work like this. But again, here you have the ability to tweak your setting. So if I want the color to be different, let's say more towards green, I can simply pick any color that I want. But also, if I want to change the pixel size and make it very, very grainy, right? I could do that. I can change variation. Uh, I can change border damage. So we'll go way up, for example. But also, uh, you can kind of tweak the stains. Now, stains on a picture is interesting because these are on the surface of the picture, not on the image itself, okay? So if we were to bring down the stains a lot, you can immediately see a totally different effect, okay? Let's bring down the scratches, for example. Okay, cool. So you can tweak all that stuff. So what else have we got? Frames. We can choose for a frame looking like this, you know, with an alpha image type of uh, structure. Um, you can, for example, take this effect here. Uh, clear. Oh, wait on. Go back to my frames. There we go. Uh, let's go to our presets. Uh, where we go, guys? Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, so there's all different types that you can choose from. So uh, just to recap, um, a lot of options for texturing in wood, in stone. You can change colors, variations. You can change the uh, position of tiles, for example. Um, and also, if you have existing images that you want to use for texturing or as a prop in your scene, all sorts of neat stuff, okay? So I just actually got this in today. So this is my first time ever working with this. And as you can see, it's pretty intuitive. So kind of neat. And it's really, really affordable. Um, I got the pro version, which was like 80 bucks. And I think they even start at like 29, right? So if you want to check them out, I think I got their website up here. Uh, let's see. Uh, not yet, but we'll just uh, go to google.com and we'll simply tip, type in filter forge I even typed it wrong but sorry about that 
Okay. So let's see where are they at. Um, dum -dum 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 -dum. Buy. All right. Yeah, there we go. So they start off at 29 bucks, and the pro version is 79. So uh, I would definitely recommend you check this out. I think there's also a trial version, and uh, let me know how that works out for you. And uh, looking forward to see you guys again. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.